First of all, Israel is not part of the negotiation process. We are outside. At the same time, we are also inside, but not inside formally. We are inside by the fact that we are actually giving our input to different uh, parts of the negotiation process in order to to make some uh, impact, some influence right. on the on the output. The output for us is very very important, and we hope that uh, there won't be a new agreement. Uh, but we cannot say it formally. And why is that? Why do we? Why does Israel hope not to have a new agreement? Because it's very difficult to oppose uh, a new agreement for the uh, international uh, uh, community. And secondly, we don't believe that Iran will respect any new agreement. And in this matter, I think that we think, we presume, we assume that Iran will go uh, with agreement or without agreement to the uh, nuclear bomb. So tell us, in, in your opinion, as someone who covers the stuff and is in this, in this world all of the time, what have you taken away from what the discussions are that are happening in Vienna right now? Like, what is really going on? In Vienna, first of all, the general atmosphere show that the uh, nations, America, Brits, French, Russian, and Chinese, want an agreement. Even they want an agreement at any price, and the Iranians know it very well. So they are also playing like a chess game with the uh, uh, five, or five nations uh, dealing with, uh, with the Iranians. No, the Iranians are very, very good by playing this game, mm -hmm. because they know that they are actually the underdog, for one hand, and right. the other hand, they know that they can do almost everything because the other side wants an agreement. From the Israeli side, we, we try to be moderate by our, I would say, uh, impact, input on the nation because we cannot intervene, interfere in this process. On the other side, we also say, like just mentioned this morning, uh, Naftali Bennett, Prime Minister, that we are not obligated by this agreement, if there is an agreement, that means that all the options are really on the table. Right. And what does that mean if Israel in the end doesn't agree to the agreement if everybody else agrees? The agreement, like, well, you're saying that, that officials are listening to what Israelis have to say, but what if it comes down to that and they're ready for the agreement and then the Israeli officials say, no, 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 like, will they listen? I would say, Emily, that this interview between you and me is maybe the most difficult one for me because we talk about a possibility of war. We talk about about the possibility of military strike from Israel with, hopefully, uh, allies against the nuclear uh, facilities in Iran. Mm. It's, it's a possibility, but this possibility, of course, has the potential to open other fronts in the north with Lebanon, with Hezbollah, in the south with Hamas, inside within uh, Israel, and like we just have uh, seen it a few months ago, I mean, uh, last year during the last operation against the Hamas, altogether we talk about a possibility of war if it's impossible to stop Iran to get the nuclear bomb, because the Iranians want to get the nuclear bomb. Wow, so this is a, a saga with no, no resolution in sight as of now. There is a resolution. And the resolution can be, uh, uh, can be uh, uh, achieved by a very tough and a very, I would say, serious uh, um, uh, man uh, management of the negotiation process. For the time being, it's not clear where the Americans are, are staying, because the Blinken and Biden uh, position seems a little bit, from outside, very fluid. Mm -hmm. It's not clear. It's not, it's, not, it's not tough enough. And with the Iranians, if you are not clear and tough enough, the way... They don't respect you. Don't, not at all. Well, thank you very much, Colonel, for that very uh, enlightening look at this very delicate situation. Thank we'll you very much. We'll see you soon.